Hey everyone, pretty cool, right? Uh, it's cool to get that handwriting effect animation. It's not too difficult, so let's dive right into it. Pretty much first thing you need is uh, a still image of the handwritten text. So once you've written it out, you can snap a picture with your cell phone, or if you're actually using it in a video, just a still frame from that video. Anything to get just a still image of the text and you need to get that on your computer so you can send it to yourself, download it. Just get it on your computer and voila, it is here on your computer. Now the picture you take of your text does not need to be super high quality. Um, the nice thing about text is that it's pretty simple. You know, there's no details, there's no kind of gradients. So you don't need a high quality image to get high quality details. Text is very straightforward thing. It's literally black and white most of the time. Um, so yeah, don't worry about the quality of your image. Now that being said, you probably do want an image that is at least, you know, 1920 by 1080. If you are going to put it in a HD video, um, you will want to worry about the resolution. But even if you do have pixelation, maybe you're blowing it up and you're getting some kind of pixelation, we will cover later in this video a uh, process that you can go through to kind of solve for that and get really nice, clean, smooth edges to your text, even if you are dealing with a low resolution, uh, low quality image. Okay, another kind of preliminary note here is make sure the image of your text is flat on from the top. Uh, you don't want any kind of weird angles because uh, then it's just going to look weird in the animation. So just make sure you have a nice kind of bird's eye, top down view of your text. Okay, so before we get animating the text, there's just a little prep work you have to do here and it's pretty much to get rid of the background because you want to have access to your text with nothing behind it. You want to get rid of that white paper so that you can then place this uh, text animation onto anything that you want to place it on. So first we'll just drag a mask around our text to kind of get rid of everything except for the piece of paper and the text. We don't need any of that background that was captured in that image. Um, so once you have your mask, that's great. And then you just want to add an effect to your image and that effect is called levels. So apply levels and then just adjust the settings. And really what you're doing with levels is you're kind of squeezing the light and dark values of your image. And when you get it to a certain point in that right range, every pixel of your image is either going to be completely black or completely white. So that's what you're going for here. Now you'll want to put something in the background underneath your image layer. So just create, you know, any solid color layer will do fine. Uh, just put it down there and then just change the blending mode of your image layer to darken. And then your dark text will be the only thing that shows up over top of your background. Okay, now what we actually want to do here is add on a few more effects so that we're not relying on the blending mode option to get the look to get the effect that we're going for. Uh, you know, blending modes can be a little wonky depending on how you're using them and what's in the background. So um, also using these effects will allow us to have control over the color of our text, of our writing. So go back to your layer, go back to your image layer, put the blending mode back to normal, and then add on these three effects. You're gonna add on inverts, unmult and fill. And that pretty much does it. Just change the color of your fill effect. I think it defaults to red. Just change it to whatever you want and that's it. And by the way, the unmult effect is doesn't, you're probably not going to have it. It's something that you have to download, but it's a completely free effect. You can go get it from the folks over at Red Giant. Unmult is a very great effect. It's a very simple effect, but it's very versatile and you'll probably uh, use it in a lot of different situations. Okay, so really quickly, what is the effect that each of those effects had? Well, invert pretty much just inverts your image. So anything that's black becomes white, anything that's white becomes black and unmult gets rid of anything that is black. So anything that is black becomes transparent. And then fill pretty much just fills in anything that's left over. So anything that is opaque or not transparent, fill will just fill that in with whatever color that you want. All right, awesome. So our image is pretty much ready to go for animation. And I'm just gonna pause here and go off on a quick side tangent. And this process that I'm about to go over will solve for any of those pixelated edges that you might have. So if you did take a low quality image and you blew it up, or if your image is just you know kind of pixelated around the edges of your text, or maybe it's not even that bad, but you just really want clean looking text that looks kind of digital, um, you can use this process. Pretty much what this involves is just exporting an image from After Effects, bringing it into Illustrator, 
into Adobe Illustrator and then using the image trace uh, command in Illustrator to, to basically vectorize your raster image. So this is literally digitizing your text, taking it from handwriting to, you know, something that resembles more of like a font on your computer. And once you apply image trace, just, you know, select the black and white option. Make sure that you go down into the advanced settings and, and check off ignore white so that the background is gone. And just play around with the threshold and the path settings to kind of get the look that you're going for there. And that's pretty much it. Then you would just save the Illustrator image as either an Illustrator image or as a PNG, any file type that gets rid of the background and keeps it transparent. And then just bring that image back into After Effects and work from that. Now for my purposes, I'm gonna keep it organic. I'm not gonna use the Illustrator method. I actually want this to look like the original handwriting kind of comes back onto the piece of paper like magic. So I'm not gonna use the Illustrator option, but feel free to use that uh, if you want to. Okay, so we're finally ready for animation in After Effects here. So what you want to do here is just grab your pen tool, set the fill to transparent and set the stroke to just any, any weight, not, not too big, probably about, you know, 10, and then just start tracing over your letter. And you're probably going to want to adjust your stroke weight so that your tracing covers the lines of your letter completely, but not much further than that. Also, you're likely going to want to go into the properties of your path layer and just set it to round caps and round joins. Then you're going to want to add something called trim paths and then animate the end property so that it starts at zero and finishes at 100. And the speed and the easing is completely up to you of your animation, but I pretty much do, you know, 20 frames in duration and I start it off fast and I ease it out to a slow conclusion. All right, so once you've drawn your path, just make sure that layer is above your image layer, set your image layer to alpha mat, and then just play it back and you can see the effect that this is having. Okay, so you might actually notice that things start to get a bit messy here. Anytime that you have two paths intersecting in your letters, things start to get revealed before you want them to. And using masks can actually help solve for this. So what you wanna do is select your shape layer and select the pen tool, just like we did before. Uh, this time, make sure it's set to the mask mode. And then with your layer selected, your shape layer selected, just draw masks around the parts that you want to exclude and set all your masks to subtract. And that's it. Now your, now your line that you want to be there is looking nice and clean. Nothing is there that you don't want. Sometimes there is a little more work to do there and you actually have to get into animating your masks so that they're covering it up and then you're moving them out of the way so that they're no longer covering it up. Stuff like that. But we won't get into all that here. Just be aware that sometimes you're gonna actually have to animate those masks as well. And that's pretty much the gist of it. So it's a bit of a tedious pro process, but it's definitely worth it in the end. Um, you kind of want to be careful not to get into animating, you know, huge blocks of, you know, paragraphs of text because that would just take forever. But it's really worth it for just little quick text animations. And um, it's really just a matter of duplicating that image layer multiple times. Pretty much every time you have a new line that you want to animate, duplicate the image layer and then just trace over it with another shape layer. Hopefully you can find a lot of, you know, different situations to use this. You know, it can really help your animations to, you know, you know be kind of fun and bright and, and, and cheerful, if those are the right words. And you can also use it, you know, to kind of, you know, maybe you're using it on like cursive text. It can really kind of help things look, you know, smooth and elegant as well. And yeah, there's just a bunch of different ways you can use this. A really cool thing about doing the handwriting, like the real life handwriting to animation is that it kind of guarantees that your font is going to be completely original. Um, so it's kind of a cool feature of doing it that way. But yeah, it's just a really cool effect. That's about it though. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe to the channel if you want to be you know, updated on new videos that come out. And uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.